In my previous video, I presented data for the association between total cholesterol levels in blood with all-cause mortality risk. I blood test four to six times per year, so what does my data look like in terms of total cholesterol? So here we see that data. Uh, on the y-axis, we've got total cholesterol in milligrams per deciliter plotted against time. Each blue uh, a point corresponds to a value, total cholesterol value, uh, for a given date. So my average total cholesterol uh, during that period is 145 milligrams per deciliter. So how does that, uh, what, what does that put me in terms of uh, mortality risk? So here's that data, and we're looking at mortality risk for 45 to 54-year-olds. Uh, I'm currently 47 years old chronologically. And based on my 145 uh, value, that will put me at about 60% higher uh, at a 60% higher risk of death for all causes when compared with someone with higher cholesterol levels, in this case around 220. So with that, uh, with that information, uh, I should probably alter my diet, uh, which should increase my blood cholesterol levels and potentially uh, that uh, should reduce my all-cause mortality risk. So which dietary factors are most strongly correlated with my total cholesterol levels in blood? So 2015, I haven't just tracked my uh, blood test uh, results, I've also tracked my diet. So I weigh all my food and then log that uh, intake into an online app, which tells me my macro and micronutrients uh, that I consumed on that day. So I've been doing that since 2015. So for each blood test, I have an average dietary intake that corresponds to that blood test. So for example, if I uh, uh, do, do a blood test on January 1st, uh, January 2nd starts the dietary period for my next blood test. So if I blood test on March 1st, so January 2nd to February 28th or 29th, depending if it's on, on, in a leap year, uh, I can take the average dietary intake from January 2nd to February 29th, and that data would correspond to the blood test then on March 1st. So with, with enough uh, average dietary periods that correspond with uh, blood test results, I can start to look for correlations between my diet with my blood tests, and that's exactly what I do. So um, what I found was that my plasma levels of cholesterol are most strongly uh, correlated with my saturated fat intake. So that's what's plotted here, total cholesterol in milligrams per deciliter on the y-axis against my saturated, my average saturated fat intake in grams per day. And we can see that the correlation is very strong. Uh, in this case, it's 0 0.87. So a correlation of uh, 1 in this case is perfectly linear. That's as good as it gets. So having a correlation of 0 0.87 is a very strong correlation. Uh, and we can, it's a significant correlation too, statistically significant. We can see that by the p-value of 2.2 times 10 to the negative 8. So what this means is, is that the higher my saturated fat intake, the higher my total cholesterol levels in blood. And uh, at the high end of this range, my saturated fat intake being around 50 grams per day, the highest cholesterol level that I've attained in the last five years is around 180. So this would suggest that I should go even higher if I want to get my cholesterol levels to around 220, which was associated with lowest risk of death for all causes for my age group. So, but then we've got the biohacker's dilemma. If I improve one variable, do I make two others worse? So in this case, those two variables, one of them is uh, glucose. So what we're looking at here is the correlation between my total cholesterol levels with my plasma glucose levels on the x-axis. And it isn't a strong correlation, it's a moderately strong correlation, less strong than the saturated fat data, but it's a significant correlation as indicated by the p-value uh, with the correlation coefficient of 0 0.58. And what that means is that as my cholesterol levels increase, so do my plasma glucose levels, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Similarly, uh, higher total cholesterol is also associated with higher levels of plasma creatinine for me. And again, this is also a moderately strong correlation with a co correlation coefficient of 0 0.61. And it's, again, statistically significant, as you can see by the p-value. So um, it also, it's also important to note that these are univariate associations, meaning the correlation between glucose with total cholesterol or creatinine against cl total cholesterol, it's one variable uh, in its correlation against another variable. It's called univariate. Now, I can look at the combined uh, correlation between glucose and creatinine against total cholesterol, and what does that result in? So when I, when I put those two in, in a model, the correlation is then 0 0.7, which is now getting towards a pretty strong correlation. And it's also interesting to note that the um, percentage of the variance, the R squared, that is explained uh, by glucose and creatinine 
the, sorry, the percentage of the variance in total cholesterol that's explained by glucose and creatinine, it's 40, about 49%. That's what the R squared is uh, indicating. So almost half of the variability in cholesterol is explained by these two other plasma biomarkers, thereby illustrating a big chunk in, in, you know, of cholesterol is, is explained by just two biomarkers. I think that's important data. So um, can I derive a total cholesterol optimal range based on also optimizing these two biomarkers? So uh, in a previous video on glucose, I presented data uh, in terms of what's optimal for uh, all-cause mortality risk and how it changes with age. So briefly, um, uh, glucose levels between 80 and 94 milligram, milligrams per deciliter is associated with lowest all-cause mortality risk. Um, values around 85 are associated with biological youth. So uh, I'd prefer to get somewhere in the 85 to 90 range or even as close as I can to 80, even though that's uh, unlikely based on these data. Uh, as you can see, I've only hit values close to 80 twice in the last five years out of about 25 blood tests. So that's unlikely. What's more likely for me is I can get somewhere in the 85 to 90 range. So um, assuming I can get closer to 80, though, the total cholesterol range that would uh, potentially optimize my glucose values is between 130 to 160 milligrams per deciliter. So what about for creatinine? Now, I also have a video on creatinine. Check that out if you're interested. But creatinine levels increase with age, which uh, creatinine is basically a measure of kidney function. So higher creatinine indicates worse kidney function with age. So uh, it, lower is, is better for creatinine. And also uh, uh, values, all-cause mortality values uh, for creatinine are optimal around 0.8 uh, milligrams per deciliter. So uh, somewhere around 0.8 would be great. But again, based on my data, you can see I only hit somewhere around that 0.8 range twice out of 24 or 25 blood tests here. So what's more likely is somewhere in the 0.9 to 1.0 range. Uh, my average creatinine value during that five-year period is 0.92. So I'd be happier with that rather than some of the higher values uh, that you can see you know, towards 1.1 even, which is going in the wrong direction. That's ind indicative of uh, a worse kidney function. So uh, to get in that 0.85 to around one range, um, the total, my total cholesterol levels uh, would potentially need to be in the 130 to around 150 range. So somewhere in the 130 to 150, 160 range may optimize both glucose and creatinine, but it may be bad for all-cause mortality risk because if you remember on the earlier slide, values in the 130 to 160 range were associated with a higher all-cause mortality risk. So there isn't a happy ending to the story. I just wanted to illustrate that when it comes to optimizing blood biomarkers, sometimes it may be important to win as many battles as you can and not lose as many battles. It may not be possible to simultaneously optimize everything, but it may be possible to, you know, to optimize eight things and two things are not optimized. That may be as good as it can get. So uh, I'm going to keep at it and see if I can uh, you know, somehow optimize all three. But for now, this is where we are. That's all I've got. You can find me a lot of places online. Have a great day.